YouTube, it's Clint from Texas again, uh, trying to make another scorpion video. Of course, my videos depend upon how well the animals and uh, grandchildren comply. But uh, I just want to continue the video that I started earlier that had to do with bark scorpions. Uh, there are basically three types or, or, or major groups of, of scorpions, three basic divisions that they can sort of be broken down into. There are the forest slash uh, gun jungle species that live in very humid environments that are found, for example, you know, in places like uh, Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Hawaii, uh, you know, jungles all over uh, South America and other countries. Then, of course, there are the what are known as desert or xeric uh, shrubland species, which uh, live, you know, as their name implies, in very dry and uh, sparsely vegetated areas. And then, of course, what I would consider probably the most numerous is the bark species, which would probably be called bark slash household species, since a lot of households tend to have them as uninvited guests. Uh, as we mentioned last time, um, bark scorpions, there's quite a number of them. I think there were something like 70 uh, different species or more. Of course, the taxonomy of scorpions is always in constant flux. We're constantly finding new species. Uh, we're constantly also discovering that certain species that we thought were different were merely different color morphs or, you know, a sort of an aberrant um, variety of a species and, and sometimes gives the false impression that it's something different. Now, one of the things that bark scorpions are best known for, you know, getting into homes and stinging people, one of the reasons being is that since they're around, you know, bark and trees and vegetations and they look a lot like rocks and things in their surrounding environment, they're very easy to miss. Uh, last video I showed you an example of um, negative geotaxis where you have... Um, scorpions and other creatures that can walk along the underside of a surface uh, thanks to the little tiny um, claws on the bottom of a scorpion's foot they're the feet they're able to uh, grab onto things and hold on in fact when you take one of the very large species and put on you can actually feel feels like there's needles or pins sticking into your flesh and one of the reasons it's really easy to sort of overlook these things and I'll see if I can just show you is if you take one of these scorpions and you put him on a leaf, uh, you can see how he just sort of disappears. I mean, they just, they're so well camouflaged in their natural setting. And so it's easy to pick one up by mistake or to put your hand on one. I know as, you know, someone who grew up in the brick laying business it was not uncommon to get stung because you would pick up a brick and there would be one on the underside and again you know a brown brick and a brown scorpion seem to camouflage one another and next thing you know you've you've picked up a handful of uh of uh stinger at any rate uh, although most bark scorpions are not particularly venomous in the sense or a high toxicity toxicity level to their venom, some of them are, and uh, some of their stings are also extraordinarily painful. I've heard a lot of people say that the sting of a bark scorpion is uh, less than that of a bee, and uh, you know, that, that quite often can be the case, because um, there's two type of scorpion stings. There's what's known as a pre-venom sting, and there's also what's known as a full envenomation. Now, a pre-venom sting is where you, you get stung and the scorpion is giving you a very small dosage of venom. Quite often, just on the end of their tail or at the very beginning of the, of the venom injection, there's just a sort of very dilute mixture of venom. And one of the reasons being is because biologically speaking, venom is very difficult and very costly to produce, and so they try to conserve it. And scorpions can, much like snakes, control the amount of venom that they inject. Uh, a lot of times they just want to get away, so they give you a very light sting just to you know, get you away from them long enough so that they can retreat. 
Uh, scorpions do not predate on humans. They do not predate on your pets or your children. Uh, it just so happens that you come in contact with them and set them into a uh, compromised situation where they're forced to sting. Uh, likewise, a full envenomation is where you really get uh, the uh, both 